Members of Congress want to learn more about the investigation into harassment and other allegations of workplace misconduct against the Washington football team. 650,000 emails were part of that investigation. Copies of those emails leaked to the New York Times revealed racist, homophobic, and misogynistic comments made by former Las Vegas Raiders coach John Gruden and sent to the former general manager of the Washington football team. Gruden resigned about two weeks ago. Congresswoman Carolyn Maloney from New York and Congressman Raja Krishnamurthy from Illinois recently sent a letter to the NFL commissioner. They want the league to turn over the evidence and findings from the investigation, saying there is a, quote, lack of transparency. Congressman Krishnamurthy is joining us now. He's a Democrat representing Illinois' 8th District. He also serves as the chairman of the House Oversight Subcommittee on Economic and Consumer Policy. Congressman, thanks so much for being with us. Hey, good morning. Thank you for having me. So what are you looking for specifically in these documents that you've requested? Well, first of all, thanks for your attention to this very important issue. Uh, we're looking for a few different things. One, we want to know how the NFL actually investigated this particular um, very abusive workplace, at least alleged by the victims uh, at the Washington football team. Um, what we know now is that they hired a former federal prosecutor to actually investigate, but they told her, do not write anything down. Don't give us a written report. Tell it to us orally. That's highly unusual and, and rather suspicious. The second thing that I'll be looking for is the use of non-disclosure agreements. These are agreements where basically organizations or institutions um, you know, ask the victims uh, basically to be silent about what happened to them. I'm very concerned about this because if organizations do that and the victims become silent, then the perpetrators aren't held accountable and worse, they can strike again, and they usually do. So I want to dig into both of those things, and we'll start with this investigator doing, you know, a thorough investigation, but only delivering an oral report because the subject matter was deemed sensitive. What do you make of that? You know, why do you think that that was the case? I don't know. It's rather unusual. As you know, there are lots of sensitive investigations. We do sensitive investigations all the time. But the reason why we write things down is so that we can explain the basis for our findings. We can explain what we intend to do based on those findings. And we can basically lay out our thought process. And in this particular instance, they basically told the former federal prosecutor not to write anything down. And that's highly suspicious to me. So look, for, for background, for our viewers to understand, this reportedly all started when the Washington football team's owner hired a lawyer to independently investigate allegations of sexual harassment and some other issues. Now, those allegations came out that team employees were told to make a lewd video about a Washington cheerleader photo shoot for the owner and other executives. So the owner then asked the NFL to oversee the investigation. Um, do you believe having the NFL in charge of the investigation into the Washington football team and the team owner, um, choosing who conducts the investigation, do you believe that to be a conflict of interest? Well, that's a great question. Um, what kind of got our um, attention was that in the John Gruden emails, uh, there was actually an exchange between Mr. Gruden and the general counsel of the NFL, a, a gentleman named Mr. Posh. And Mr. Posh was actually in charge of the investigation into the Washington football team. And the comments that Mr. Posh had made uh, were also, in my opinion, rather inappropriate. And it just begs the question whether he would actually be an impartial person to help oversee the investigation into the Washington football team, especially if, for instance, um, he was somehow involved with the way in which that team um, handled its workplace safety issues, uh, abuse toward women, um, and other conduct that's highly disturbing. Um, and uh, so the second thing that you brought up was the use of non-disclosure agreements, which happens in business. You know, people work, uh, they have a grievance with their employer, there's a dispute about that. Uh, the employee and the employer come to a settlement agreement, and often there are non-disclosure agreements. Um, 
But how do you think the non-disclosure agreements were being used inappropriately in this case? I think that the general concept of non-disclosure agreements might be okay. But in this particular instance where there's sexual harassment, sexual abuse toward women, especially in the workplace, what we're most concerned about is essentially um, the, the people, the harassers, the perpetrators uh, not being held accountable for their conduct and then being able to strike again against other unsuspecting women or victims. That is one of the most common things that happen. I mean, you just have to look at the Harvey Weinstein episode where uh, you know, Mr. Weinstein used these non-disclosure agreements repeatedly to silence victims, and then he would strike again at someone else. And to me, I personally think a lot, in a lot of these cases, um, these uh, sexual harassment episodes almost seem like crimes, and we would never allow for crimes to go uh, under the rubric of non-disclosure agreements and yet with sexual harassment, we allow that to happen all the time, even though we know the perpetrators strike again and again and again. So that's the biggest question or challenge that we have. Congressman, we'll look forward to the results of the investigation. Uh, meanwhile, while we have you, before you go, let me ask you briefly about the ongoing negotiations uh, on the president's infrastructure and social spending plans. Uh, what's the mood right now among House Democrats about the ongoing talks? Are they concerned about some of the initiatives, some of the ones that are near and dear, for example, to your constituents in Illinois, possibly getting cut from the bill? I think that there's a mixture of concern um, with optimism and hope. Uh, I think that that, that kind of um, might be a general way to describe us this week. Um, look, I think we're getting to brass tacks. The good news is that um, I do think that we've made a lot of progress in a couple weeks uh, since um, you know when we were first hoping to uh, get this all done. Uh, but right now, I think, uh, based on what I am hearing from the speaker and others, that a lot of progress has been made. I personally think, you know, we need to extend, extend the child tax credits. We need action on climate change. Uh, we need to help people with their medical expenses. Um, basically, we need to help make Americans uh, more productive and be better able to lead more productive lives. And if we can do that, uh, we're going to be in great shape. And um, the physical infrastructure bill, repairing roads, bridges, airports, and so forth, uh, is essential as well. And I'm very hopeful that will pass to uh, this, this week. All right, Congressman Roger Krishnamurthy, thank you so much. Thank you. Have a great day. You too. Um, we should note that we reached out to the Washington football team about this story. They had no comment. We also reached out to the NFL and a spokesperson told us that we have received the letter and shared their concern that all workplaces should be free from any form of harassment and discrimination. We look forward to speaking to their offices soon.